Welcome back to Link's Awakening. We're digging holes. Welcome back. We're at hop, hop, hop. You need to go. So last time we found a cool key. These we keys had, have fun little elf We found a cool on. key. We had discussions about anxiety. <laughs> we, uh, we found a cool key. We talked we about anxiety. We saw a bunch anxiety. of fun. Fucking... Well, I think some people can relate with it. Oh, yeah. Too, oh, yeah. Sure. Definitely. I know yeah. that now. Um, at first, it was like, what? But then, like, then you're like, read things or interact with people. And you're like, it's... it's it's exactly the same. It's, it's you're like me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not alone on this fucking uh, thing. Wilson, do you have agitations? Um, I can answer that for you. Yes, you do. <laughs> okay, what do you mean by agitations? Obviously, you uh, have an agenda here. Um, well, you could elaborate more on like things that maybe get you anxiety driven. Just riled up. Riled up. I'd rather not. No, I don't want to. Sometimes act... it's a reason. <laughs> so, That's sometimes... probably one of the reasons. Yeah, sometimes just want... having to talk about it. Sometimes it's just like a... no. Will agitate it? Possible. Well, and if I don't actively have to introduce that thing that might agitate me into my life, I better choose not to. It's the way you deal <laughs> like... with it. Okay. Smart. That's just that's just an outlook that I have on like a lot of negative aspects of general life mm -hmm. is yes it's something to be aware of and something to like be conscious of but don't dwell on it and don't stay with that in your head yeah just realize that it's a part of your life accept it and move on yeah so i'm you don't like uh analyze it do anything like that oh i do but think that I it's healthy like, to kind of obsess over it no or, i'm not saying or... obsess just divulge moments like that i'd rather talk is, about is something healthy enough of my choice of something different machoids like i why there's a phone on that fucking hut i remember the first time i don't really deal with like a lot of anxiety stuff like that i'm much more on the depressive side of stuff mm -hmm. um and i remember the first time that i heard my like anybody talk about somebody being depressed and having like actual clinical depression mm-hmm mm. I was uh, staying with my sister at our grandparents' place in the cities because our parents were off at like a dental conference or whatever. And so we were just like helping them take out the trash one day and their neighbor from across the way in this little like area they lived came out and we talked to her for a few minutes and then we went back inside and everything. And they were just saying, yeah, that's our neighbor. She lives by us. She's really nice. We don't see her very much because she's depressed as she's told us and stuff like she has she has depression not like an just, older woman she's depressed i mean i was like 12 or 13 so she was older to me she older was probably like somewhere in her 40s maybe 50s middle age and i just all i imagined was just somebody like sitting alone in the dark not doing anything getting up or eating or anything and that's not far off from the truth because yeah. then later on in life i ended up being diagnosed with depression as well and dealing mm -hmm. with that and it's uh, it's a lot less active. Like, you don't really have, like, attacks as far as, like, anxiety. Mm -hmm. It's just more of a general... It's a very aura. introverted... Aura or, like, I don't want to say outlook on life, but it kind of is. It's just, like, you, you have to accept, realize and accept that maybe your way of how you view the world is a little bit skewed than most people, and it tends to be a little bit more negative when you think of things or frame things. So you need to be aware of that. So that you can then take steps to avoid doing that and frame things in a better way. Do you a lot think of, times of yourself as a normally yeah. negative person? A lot of times you won't even recognize, you won't even recognize that, you that you're depressed. But then you think about it. That's like that happened with me. Because um, depression goes hand in hand with anxiety. They don't always occur together, but they go hand in hand. Oh, yeah. So after, you know, a lot of that, then you kind of go in a depressive state. Um, Bipolar is another one. You, uh, um, but yeah, sometimes you're not even aware of it like i was um i was sitting and i was thinking and i like you know I, I don't really at the time like i hadn't played guitar in a long time i hadn't uh i was really behind on my comics i wasn't drawing as much um i was just kind of sitting you didn't feel like you were and i didn't think about it like because oh. it was just like like you didn't i didn't realize i was depressed and like uh, one day I just kind of had an off day and then I thought about it and I was just like, wow, 
kind of depressed for a long time. I didn't even realize it because it was just like because it becomes so like you know. It, Oh, I have low, like, I just want to sleep a little more. Mm -hmm. like, you don't think of it as anything other than, oh, that's just life. It's whatever. And then eventually it's like, wait, this is a recurring pattern of behavior that I'm having right now where I'm, like, not doing the things I love to do. I'm just kind of, when I'm not, like, working or so, it's something, I'm just It's basically everything sitting. they list off in those depressive commercials. Yeah, exactly. Like, do you feel run down, listless? Not eating much. <laughs> Are you describing vitamin to Benjamin? Yes. Yeah. Run down, listless, tired. Do you pop out at parties? Do you poop out at parties? <laughs> but, Are you unpopular? Uh, Are you? <laughs> God, it's been a while since I watched that. But yeah, um, it's a it's a thing you can I'm, get. I'm kind of bringing up this discussion because I don't know if you guys heard about Etika. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The YouTuber, YouTuber that guy. was uh, found Dead. deceased in the river of Brooklyn. Yep. And uh, yeah, he was struggling with a lot of stuff. Yeah, obviously. he put out like a video right not long before which is it. very i don't know if you've listened to it yeah, but I've it's it. very foreboding very sad oh yeah because he was literally on his way to do it i think yeah and um they said was, they found his stuff that he had they within that all backpack that yeah. he had on a bridge mm -hmm. so yeah it's very unfortunate it's a very sad thing but i'm bringing it up because we all have situations like that and things going on in our lives yep. that you know impede us from like connecting with other people or yep. like we don't realize that there are other people that you know like you were saying yeah you don't have anxiety too yeah. it's not just you that's suffering through this this is me i'm alone in this yeah so, you feel like caught that, up though. in your head especially yeah. with depression you can definitely be like i am it's me against the world nobody yep. else is going through what i'm going through i mean nobody can possibly understand my viewpoint because yeah, yeah it's it so, seems like it's so unique it's to such you. a profound feeling to you that like it's it's one hundred percent legitimate, no matter what you're feeling. But it's just that you know, and that's but that's part of the reason why it's so important in any of those situations when you're dealing with anything at all is to communicate. Yeah, talk to, to reach somebody. out to other people, open open your mouth, let the words come out, and just talk about how you're feeling, what is happening in your life, and like mm -hmm. just friends, talk. family, pets. Yeah, uh -oh. it's just Kids, healthy to whatever, whatever it's just healthy about. to talk about it. That's even it. if you don't know Get that how to out. like put it into words. Have you feel like nobody else can understand you? But then once you start talking about it, you realize that they might not be going exactly like through the. They might not be going through exactly what you are. But yes, they can sympathize. Yeah. And they can understand what you're going through. And at least do they what may they can have to try and help you through it. Yeah, and they may have gone through similar things. Yeah. Or different thing, but it has a similar effect, where that people can usually understand where you're going. Everybody's been like depressed at a point. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's clinically depressed. Exactly. Um, where they need to be like medicated and watched. Yeah, but a lot of people are, are, you know, have experienced depression and like anxiety and stuff like that. So they, they can understand at least what it feels like. You know what you I mean? You can see where they're coming from. Yeah. You can at least. Put yourself in their shoes and yeah. that's that's kind of like what i like finding out about people <laughs> is the way that they they think not like so i can manipulate the way they think and no. be like well you need to realize that this is this and that is that like i can totally yeah understand where both you guys are coming from from your your mindset mm -hmm. from your anxiety and how it makes you feel and how you need to decompress i have never had to experience that mm -hmm. luckily but like i i do feel for I have sympathy for people like that because mm -hmm. I've ran into them. Yep. And with Wilson's depression that, you know, at a young age, I was misdiagnosed where they had me medicated on things that, you know, I did not need. Right. And that was just me just being... Um, That's never good. No, and it's not. No, I don't... I was medicated for um, ADD. Yep. Mm -hmm. ADHD. Wow, and no, like, no, like, weird... Um, Crazy. No weird, like, um, I don't want to say weird because that puts it in a bad category, but like, no thing that was totally off just of being an adolescent would yeah. be. It's just normal growing up phases that I yep. went through. Yep. They just misdiagnosed me and medicated me. And mm -hmm. I was like, yep. well, I guess this is me now. I had to accept, yep. like, well, shit changes your brain. Down. Yeah, and it does. But it's somebody of authority that you are told to trust and to look up to and to, like, they just respect what they say. They're just <laughs> telling you that you are somehow not wrong or anything. Right. But just like, 
different or that you have this thing that you need to be like medicated for and, and it changes I don't, you and you realize like and my mom could know. tell the second i was on those meds yeah i became more i don't know down yeah i would be just secluded in my room just not going outside yeah. just depressive depressed sleepy yep. not hungry at all yep because it messes with your your body Brain chemistry and which controls your body yeah and so like the pills that i took basically said to my brain he's full he's fine yeah but i would be like cotton mouth and I'd be like oh, not your brain are connected good. is connected to your nerves and sends signals right yeah so if you are fucking with the brain then you're fucking with your nerves and your nerves will can do stupid shit that's like with anxiety too it's like all of a sudden you'll just start like somewhere might ache for a little bit mm -hmm. or you feel pain somewhere it's nothing it's just your brain being a dick mm -hmm. it's just your brain dingus yeah it's uh it's interesting stuff interesting things and we'll be yeah. back in the next episode we've talked about stuff and hopefully you guys can relate at some point yes or in some ways mm -hmm. talk to people but I just wanted to make an episode where we just talk about uh, yeah. our brains and our uh, our brains are obviously are obviously magnificent brains. Yeah, yeah, they're obviously. capable of a lot of things. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll be out of this dungeon hopefully in the next episode. Is that Quite a metaphor? Or... 